That's wrong. So they have value? They have value in the world? No, they don't. They don't have value in the world? No, they don't. The, the only race that has value is the Israelites. Who are the Israelites today? The blacks and the Amerindians. Give me that in, in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 40. We can read it out the Bible. Let's, can we read it out the Bible? Let's read it. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 17. All nations, all nations outside Israel, before him are as nothing. The Bible says all nations before the Most High God is as nothing. Meaning what? They have no value. Read that verse again for grace. You're because you look sharp. Read that verse again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 40 and verse 17. All nations before him are as nothing. My brother, what's your name? No we never got name, your name. No one name. No one name. We, we're, we're trying to have a dialogue. No okay, red man, red man, right? Buckman. No Buckman. Okay. Buckman. Yeah, Give me Titus too. So what we, our church name is Israel United in Christ. What we do is we go into the Bible and we actually show our people who we are in the Bible. We can actually trace our lineage back to the nation of Israel. The descendants of Abraham, that's who we are here in this country. But, Red, Red man, I, want you to I just want you to listen. I just want you to listen. Just give me like, just give me like 10 minutes. Okay, I'm going to show you. 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 Just listen. Just listen. Just show you. I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen. But, but, man, listen. Okay, listen, listen. I just want you to listen. Listen. Titus 2 verses. Verses 2. Titus chapter 2 and verse 2. You listening? Okay. That the age men be sober. The Bible says, let the aged man be sober. What does it mean to be sober? The, the man just walked by said, don't be under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Read that verse again. Let the aged man be sober. Listen, the Bible says, one way that we should live our life is that we must be sober as a people. My brother, can I ask you a question? Why is it so important that aged men be sober? Why would the Bible say, let the aged man be sober? He's speaking, he's speaking, he's speaking, let him speak, let him speak. Say again? You're absolutely right. So that we can actually think correctly. Read the verse again. That the aged man be sober. So this is one law that we should live our life by. Always be sober minded, meaning not be abusing drugs or alcohol. Now there's nothing wrong with drinking. But when you drink, the Bible says you must drink in moderation, meaning know your limits. If you're drinking and five minutes later you start to walk and you're stumbling all over the place, you got to know your limit, in other words. Read the verse again. That the aged men be sober. So the Bible says the older men. What man in specifics? The blacks and Amerindians. We must learn to be sober-minded. Reason being, when you're sober, my brother, you can now be able to see the issues that's wrong with the neighborhood. Then you know what you can do? You can say, you know what? We have a drug issue in the neighborhood. Let's find a way to deal with the drug users. Let's find a way of how we stop teenage pregnancy. But if you're always on drugs, if you're always high, if you're always on the corner selling weed, using drugs, guess what? There's gonna be no, there's gonna be no solution in the neighborhood. So that's what we're here to do. To teach our people how to live a better life. You understand that? Red man, you understand? Okay, read the verse again. That the edge man be sober. So the first step in rebuilding the blacks and Amerindians community, we must be sober-minded. The drug use, the drug alcohol abuse, it must be stopped. Yes, let me hear what you got to say. Abraham. What does Abraham look like? What color is Abraham? You're absolutely right. Read that verse again. That the age men be sober. The Bible says older men must be sober. The alcohol use, the drug use, you gotta stop amongst blacks and Amerindians. If we don't stop the abusing of drugs, our neighborhoods will not get any better. Read on. Grave. Grave. The Bible says the older men 
must be grave. You know what it means to be grave as an older man? But what does it mean to be grave as an older man? You're right. The young men must also be grave. But what does it mean to be grave? It means serious minded. A serious minded man is a man that says, you know what? There is issues in the neighborhood. Let's fix it. That's a man that's serious in his thinking. But if you're not serious minded, if you're not sober, you won't care about the issues that, that goes on in your neighborhood. That's why amongst blacks and Amerindians, there's a high influx in suicide. There's a high influx in baby mamas and baby daddies. You know why? Because the older men are not teaching their sons, their, ne their nephews, to be serious. What's the young black man doing today? Sagging his pants. His pants is way below his butt. And he also has the belt on. That's madness. So the Bible says, all the men must be sober-minded and you must be serious in your thinking. Read that verse again. That the edge men be sober. Sober-minded, clear in your thinking. Grim and serious. You know, you know, man, this is one sign you can tell that a man is not serious. When he walks the streets and he's chasing after all the women that walk by, that's a man that's not serious in his thinking. All he thinks about is his penis. All he can think about is having sex with as much women as possible. That's a man that's not serious in his thinking. That's a man that would not care if the young kids in the neighborhood grew up to be drug dealers. And that's a mindset that plagues the blacks and Amerindians. That's a mindset we must repent of. You understand it, my brother? What's your name? I never got your name. Second? I didn't hear you. What's his name? Don't put a Don't want to tell me your name? Okay, I'm going to call you Big Bro. Read that verse again. And Redman, right? Buckman. Yeah, Buckman, Redman. Well, call me Grant Stewart. Grant Stewart? Grant Stewart. Grant Stewart? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Grant Stewart. Nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. See, we, let's have a dialogue. We ain't got to be arguing and screaming all the, all the time. You know what they label black people as? Angry black men. Guess what? We're not angry black people. At times, we might just be ignorant or we might just be confused. But the Bible is what's going to get us right. You understand that? Yeah. Read that verse again. Titus chapter 2 and verse 2. That the edge men be sober. Be sober minded. Yes. Grave. Serious minded. Read on. Temperate. Temperate. You're not quick to raise your voice and get angry. Uh, today, a lot of black men, they're not temperate. For example, a lot of the young men today in the neighborhoods, are very, very emotional. You know how? If you raise your voice too loud at a young black man, you know what he's going to do? He's going to want to cry. All because why? He has not been taught right in the house by a father figure. The mom just raising him. In the school system, who is his guidance? Female teachers. Guess what? A woman cannot raise a boy to become a man. It takes men to raise other men. Right. You understand that? You said man is above, woman must step over. But that's wrong, because here's why. Right. When the woman leave, when the woman is in the leadership role, if the man is above, woman give me above. Isaiah 3 verses 12. I'm going to show you what happens when women is leading and ruling over the men. Grand Stewart, Grand Stewart, you're right, you're right, but listen. But listen, you're right, you're right, right. But listen to this. Grand Stewart, I want you to listen. When God made Adam, right? What was Eve given to Adam for? Was Eve given to be Adam's counselor? We hear about a helper. You're absolutely right, Grand Stewart. Grand Stewart, give me a bump. You're right. Eve, Eve was made. Eve was made to help Adam. You got to understand what you right to really mean. But what? Let, let's read a verse. Let's read a verse in the Bible. Let's read a verse in the Bible. Isaiah chapter three and verse twelve. As for my people, children are their oppressors. The Bible says God's people. Children oppress God's people every single day. Who's God's people? Blacks and Amerindians. We are the Israelites found in the Bible. We are the direct descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's who God's people are. Read that verse again. As for my people, children are the oppressors. So the Bible says God's people, children oppress them. Let's see how. And women rule over them. The Bible says women rule over God's people. Speaking, a woman should not have no authority over the man at all. There is no 
50-50 in their relationship. Biblically speaking, the man was made to be above the woman. But look in society today. You have women as bosses, you have women as managers, and what do they do? They teach the men to be weak and soft and more effeminate. That's why a lot of black women today say, you know what? Don't raise your voice at me. And what does the black man do? He goes and he cowers and cries in the corner. So the Bible says women are not supposed to be in no leadership position over the man. It destroys the man's manly nature. Read that verse again. As for my people, children are the oppressors. And women rule over them. Women ruling over God's people. What happens? Read on. All oh, my people, they which lead thee, they which lead us are the women, cause thee to err. Cause the Israelites to err. Meaning, we grow up and we are confused. The men grow up, they are effeminate. The men grow up, they speak soft. The men grow up, they are emotional. Oh, because why? Women ruling over the men. The Bible said that's wrong. And as men, guess what we must do? We must be the one sober in our thinking, the one serious in our thinking to say, you know what? We got to fix this. So we're going to encourage the young men to guess what? Marry. Raise a family. Stay with one woman. Once you stay with that one woman, you raise a family. You stay in the house. You raise your women is ruling over us today. Give me Genesis 2 and verse 18. Without the woman, you can't do nothing. Yeah. You can drink Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him an help meet for him. The Bible says God made Adam and God gave Adam Eve as a help. Eve was not given to Adam as his equal. Eve was not given to Adam as his guidance or his counselor. Eve was given to help Adam, not a slave. So we're not saying that the man ruling over the woman makes her a slave. That's not what the Bible is saying. All the Bible is saying is that, for example, in the relationship, the woman should be the help, the pillar of rest for the man. The man can't go on the job, then come back home, and he's being bossed and bullied by the wife. That can't be going on in the relationship. That's why a lot of relationships, they fail today. You know why? Because you have two lions in the house. You cannot have two lions in the house. Grand Stewart, listen, listen to this point. On the cricket team, right? On the cricket team. Grand Stewart, I want you to listen. I want you to listen. On the cricket team. On the cricket team. Can you have everyone as the captain? No. There can only be one captain on the cricket team. Same way in the relationship. You can only have one head. You can only have one leader. You understand that, Grand Stewart? Hebrews 13 and verses 4. Okay, go ahead. The wild animals, male and female, they all agree they are fighting against each other. You're right. So, we are human beings of a high intelligence. You're right. And look what we're doing. Because you know why? You know why? Because we're not applying God's laws. Because we're not applying God's laws. We're, what we're saying is the woman... Grand Stewart, Grand Stewart, I want you to listen to this. Grand Stewart, I want you to listen to this. Hebrews 13 and verses 4. You're absolutely right. You're right. The woman is important in the relationship, but guess what? That does not mean that she is above the man at all. 1 Corinthians 11. First Corinthians 11 verses 3. Grand Stewart, nowhere in the Bible, nowhere in the Bible does it say that the woman is equal to the man. Read what you got. First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of man is Christ. Christ ruled over us. Mankind is not equal with Christ. You got that? Grand Stewart, you agree? Are you equal to Christ? Grand Stewart, are you equal to Christ? No, 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 no. No, right? Read that verse again. Very good. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So Christ as the head of man, meaning Christ is above us. Yeah. We do as Christ say. Yeah. Read on. And the head of the woman. And the head of the woman is who? Is the man. 
the head of the woman is man. So guess what? There is no equality between man and woman. The same way there is no equality between man and Christ. Read the verse again. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman in the relationship. The head of woman on the face of the planet is man. That's right. The head of the black woman, the head of the Amerindian woman, is the black man and the the Amerindian man. That's who the head of the black woman and the Amerindian woman is. Right. And guess what? That is the order that God set up since the beginning. That's why when he made Adam, he said, Adam, take Eve, your wife, as a helpmeet. Because you are above her. You are the head Art. of the of the relationship. Now give me Ephesians 5 verse 22. Let's do it before you go. One more. One more. One more. One more. Ephesians 5 and verses 22. I want to show you something. I'm going to show you. Listen, in the relationship, the woman is not the slave. You got it? Verse 2, listen. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 22. New Testament. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband. The Bible says for the woman to submit to her husband. Why? So there can be peace in the relationship. So the relationship can be healthy. Read on. There must be equal understanding there. Why submit yourselves unto your own husband? Why do you think a lot of black women and and Amerindian women is single today? The main reason is because the black woman wants to be above the man. When the Bible say that they should be submissive to the man. Read on. For the husband is the head of the wife. The husband, according to God. Is the head of the wife in the relationship, not the other way around. Read on. Even as Christ is the head of the church, Christ is the head of the church, the congregation of Israel. Read. And he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husband. The Bible says, let the wives be subject to their husband. If the wife is subject to the husband, the wife is not equal to the husband. The same way you go on the job, you are subject unto your boss. You are not equal to your boss or your manager. Read on. Why you think your boss is keep you? Because you're not good at it, you're equal to us. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husband in everything. Wife must be subject to her husband in everything. Same way on the job. You know why? For example, you said the boss keeps you on the job. You know why? Because he needs you. Because you listen to what he says. Because he needs you. Because you subject to what he says and you subject to the rules of the job. Yes. So your job description, you don't fight against it. You do what you got to do. That's right. The same way in the relationship, the wife must be subject to her husband. Right. And do as the man says according to the Bible. So there is no equality. Read on. Verse 35. Husbands, love your wife. Now the Bible says the husband must love his wife. Meaning he must not treat the wife as a slave. So even though the Bible says the woman is a is below the man, the woman is below the husband. The husband must not treat her evil. The husband must still love her as he loves himself. Read on. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church. The husband must take care of the wife even though she is a subject unto him. So that the woman is subject to the husband does not mean that she's a slave. So that's the wrong mindset, Grand Steward. No, no, no. But let's read on. Let's read on. You got it wrong, bro. And give himself for it. So Christ loved the nation of Israel so much that he gave him he gave his life for it. So you must love your wife to the, your wife to the point where you are willing to die for your wife. Read on. Verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives. Bible says, men, grace to what you're not listening. Yeah, let's have a dialogue. I listen, you okay, brother. read up, read up verse again. You're so ought men to love their wives. The Bible says the husband must love the wife. So that does not mean that even though the man is above the woman, the man must treat the wife as a slave. That's not true. 
That is not true that the husband treats the wife as a slave even though she is subject unto him. You understand that? The husband must still love and take care of the wife. And both of them must agree with each other. That's what the writer really means. You're right. They must agree with each other. They must he's agree. A, he's a big boy more than she. She's Grand Stewart. Grand Stewart. I want you to listen. Grand Stewart. Did, did you grow? Did you grow up with both parents in the house? Did you grow up with both parents in the house? Yeah, right. How was? How did your? What, how did your mother? How did your mom treat your father? Something. This is something. No. My father left ten to two weeks, and he was uh -huh. able to take care of all of me. That's good. He did his job as a, as, a, as, a, as a father, right? That's right. What was the role of your mother in the house? Go the farm, just a key, mm -hmm. down the other, mm -hmm. down the dash, and the cassava thing. So she helped him? Kept the fish in the tent, right. and all the different things. All right, girl, let me go home. You gotta hunt. Bring home the white meat and eat and feel like. Eat up, pick up and feel like. Right, right, right. So in the relationship, hey. your mom, your mom helped, helped, she, so. Operate. When they went hunting, yeah. who was leading the hunt? Out to them. Out to them guys. Why do you get lava? Shoot the lava. He might cheat before she. She cheat before he. Right, I guarantee you, your father was the one that was leading the hunt. And guess what? Your mom was helping him. And guess what? I'm pretty sure. Right. Agree that what? The man is the head. Because if your father raised 22 children, he needed help in that relationship. And guess what? Your mother was the help. Right. You think your father could have raised 22 children if your mom was giving him a hard time in the house? Guess what he would have done? He would have left. He would have left the relationship. But guess what? Your mom was there to support and help him. Not to be a slave, but to subject onto what he said. And that's what gives a long and healthy relationship. Hebrews 13 and verses 4. Is it zero, zero, zero? You said zero on the poem. Put the finger close to it and the one you get it. And I'm not enough zero, zero, zero. Come on, Stuart. Grand Stewart. Watch it. Watch you, it with your feet. Grand Stewart, what did you learn today? What did you learn today, Grand Stewart? I learned that you're going awkward, man. I'm going awkward? You're leading me astray. Well, how did I lead you astray? What did I tell you that's wrong? You're talking about race and all that. So you're talking about race and all that. What about race? What about race? That is not right. You're all equal. Indians have not much race than this country, man. Okay, Grand Stewart. I want you to, I want you to ch check this out, right? In a, in a multicultural society where everyone is equal, where does the blacks and Amerindian end up? I'm not sure something. No, answer the question. Answer the question before you, before you show me. In a multicultural society, right? When, when there's multiple race all together as one, where does the black and Amerindian end up? No, no, I'm just asking you a question. I'm just asking you a question, Grand Stewart. When all races come together, when all races come together, they all look down upon the blacks and Amerindians. So to have a multicultural society with all races together, that's a destruction to our people. That's wrong. No, they don't. No, they don't. The only race that has value is the Israelites. Who are the Israelites today? The blacks and Amerindians. Give me that in, in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 40. We can read it out the Bible. Let's, can we read it out the Bible? Let's read it. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 17. All nations, all nations outside Israel, before him are as nothing. The Bible says all nations before the Most High God is as nothing. Meaning what? They have no value. Read that verse again for Grace Stewart because he looks shocked. Read that verse again. The book of Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 17. All nations before him are as nothing. What's the all nations? The Chinese, the Japanese, the Africans, the Caucasians, the East Indians. I mix my one The Bible says all the nations are nothing. The Bible says before God, if you're not of the lineage of Jacob, God sees you. God sees you as nothing. Read on. You say you believe in the Bible. And they are counted to him less than nothing. The nations are counted less than nothing. So you know what that means? God does not look down on all nations with favor. The only favor that He looks down upon 
is the nation of the Israelites, the blacks and Amerindians. You were the only race of people that was giving God's laws. We don't. And vanity. So the nations are compared to nothing and vanity, meaning double nothing. Now give me Romans chapter 3 and verses 3. In the Revelation, tell you, there are going to be different people of tribes and language. You're right. You're absolutely right. You know why? There are going to be people of all nations being delivered because the nation of Israel was scattered into all nations doing slavery. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3 and verse 3. For what if? Some did not believe. So what if you don't believe that the nations are compared to nothing? What if you don't believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Because you don't believe. Does that mean that they're still not nothing? Because you don't believe that they're nothing, does that give them value? What, what's the answer? This is something. We have God forbid. God forbid, meaning no. It's only two ways. Read on. God one. You want, yeah. You want. Let God be true. Do do Let God be true. Do do but right? every man a liar. Yes, but do do every do. man a liar. Grand student, I want you to listen. Stop talking for a second. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As it is written that thou might just be justified in thy sayings. So the Bible says we must be justified in our sayings. But Grand Stewart, this is what I want you to understand. This is what I want you to understand. Grand Stewart, listen. Grand Stewart, listen. Guess who? Guess who? Grand Stewart, listen. listen. Just listen. Just be quiet for a second and listen. God gave you one mouth and two ears for a reason. Listen. Listen. You're not listening. What we're trying to tell you is we are the ones that God looked down upon with favor. We are the Israelites, the blacks and Amerindians, not the ones that only believe. Read Romans 3 verses 1. Romans chapter 3 and verse 1. What advantage then at the Jew? The Bible says the Jews have an advantage. Read on. Or what profit is there of circumcision? The Jews have an advantage because they were given the covenant of circumcision. Not all races. Read on. Much every way. So the Jews have an advantage in every single way. Why? Let's read on. Chiefly because that unto them, unto the Jews, were committed the oracles of God. The Jews have an advantage because the Israelites, the Jews, were given God's laws. Not all races on the face of the planet. So the only race that God looks down with favor on is the Jews, the Israelites. Who are the Jews and the Israelites today? The blacks and the Amerindians. James 1 verses 1. James 1 verse 1. You're right. I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you why. James 1 verse 1. James chapter 1 and verse 1. James a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes to the twelve tribes, the Jews, the Israelites, which are scattered abroad. That's why Christ said, go and teach the gospel in all nations. Because the Jews were scattered into all nations from slavery. The gospel is only for one race of people. The gospel meaning the good news is only for one race of people. What race of people needs you good news? The Indians. Who accept the gospel? Read who accept the gospel? James chapter 1 verse 1. James a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. So the gospel is only for the 12 tribes. The apostle James only wrote the book James to the 12 tribes scattered abroad to no one else. No one else, Grand Steward. In Revelation? Okay, let's go to Revelation 7. I'm going to show you. We'll read it. Revelation chapter 7. Yeah, because the Jews were scattered. Because the Jews were scattered. And he also said, God will have more mercy for the people Seven and four. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 4. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand. The hundred and forty-four thousand 
is only going to be made up of the blacks and Aborigines, the men, the leaders of the new kingdom that is to come. A lot of you walking in the street right now, you are God's elect, but you don't know yet. You are still asleep in Christianity. You are still asleep calling yourself Guyanese and black people. But one day the Bible prophesied and said that a remnant of you will repent. Read on. And there were seen an hundred and forty or four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So only the twelve tribes of Israel will be given the seal. What is the seal of God? Isaiah 8 verse 16. What is the seal of God that 144,000 black and Amerindian men will receive? The seal of God is God's laws. Let's prove it. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 16. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law. Seal the what? Seal the law. Seal the law. The laws of God is the seal that a remnant of you blacks and Amerindians, you will received in your minds once you repent once you start to apply God's laws once you acknowledge that you're an Israelite you have been sealed with the knowledge of what's required of you and the 144,000 is only those of the nation of Israel we used to scream black power while Haram was pushed but at the end of the day Nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana. Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.